Hello, I'm Michelle Paver. I wrote the Wolf Brother books. Nearly 20 years ago, when I was just starting to write Wolf Brother, my soon-to-be publisher, Fiona Kennedy, said she was thinking of getting an artist to do some illustrations, one for each chapter and a map. And she was thinking of the perfect artist. She said, I found the perfect artist. His name is Jeff Taylor. She adored his work and had, had loved his work for a long time. Well, I, I wasn't familiar with Jeff's work at that time, but I thought it was a, a great idea. So when I'd finished Wolf Brother, or when I was nearing the, the, the finish line, I did a list um, of a few alternative ideas for each chapter to help him. And then that was sent off by Fiona. And then a few months later, she sent me Jeff's drafts and his draft map. Wow, um, I, was, I was completely bowled over. This was a different order of pictures that I, than anything I had imagined. And I think I wrote back with a few tweaks, but, and then Jeff produced the finished amazing pictures. And that actually is the way we continued to work me sending a list, Jeff sending the most amazing pictures, me running out of superlatives um, for all six books of Chronicles of Ancient Darkness, um, and then the three that I've done recently, Viper's Daughter, Skin Taker, and latterly, uh, Wolfbane. Fans all over the world have loved Jeff's artwork for the Wolf Brother books, and not only for the Wolf Brother books. I mean, Jeff has done illustrations for such luminaries as J.R.R. R. Tolkien and Roger Zelazny um, and David Geddings, uh, Warhammer. Too many to name, actually. Yes. <laughs> as well as the most, I mean, he's a very, very talented uh, wildlife painter and photographer. But back to Wolf Brother. Um, that way of working, me sending a list and Jeff sending back the most amazing pictures. That went on for nearly 20 years. Uh, and it's worked so well that we've actually always just communicated by post. Um, we've never actually met uh, or even spoken uh, until now. So it's with great pleasure that um, I can now welcome Jeff Taylor and say, hello, Jeff. <laughs> Hi, it's Hi. it's so great finally to meet you. Um, I don't know, it may feel a bit weird. Does it feel weird to you to finally meet? Absolutely. <laughs> yeah, sure. Yeah, I mean, it's like you said, when you said 20 years, I didn't realise it was that much time. I, mean, I just, I mean, there are nine books in all and there was a hiatus after the Yes. Six book. You know, six That's book. right. And um, so, yeah, so it's, 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 it's been, well, I've, I've got to say, it's been a massive part of my life as well. Let's, let's talk about Wolf first. Okay. Um, yeah, sure. You know, yeah. uh, I mean, he's, he's the main character, one of the main characters in the story, yes. and yeah. he, I understand you loved wolves, and I, I think that comes out if we can, I can show the first picture. You know, that's Wolf sniffing the ice that he's that's met right. for the first time. For Outcast, you did an amazingly, what I loved about this picture, this is Wolf when he's grown up. What I love about this is it shows his wolfiness. You know, I mean, yes. wolves, as you know, they're narrow. They've got long legs, but they're narrow because they have to push through snow. Yeah. Yeah, I, I can distinctly remember drawing that one and, 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 and feeling that I had to compress him somehow. But it, it's always the head that's the most important thing. Um, but yeah, I mean, they, they, they can appear to be like these incredibly long legs. One of my favourite pictures is um, in Ghost Hunter. It's when Pebble is howling. Pebble is the cub who's just been dropped by the eagle owl and he's howling. Um, that's the one. Yeah, I I absolutely yeah. love that. Do you? And oh, I I just adore it. And it it sort of it's not just 
a cub, but it's also telling part of the story or evoking the story, I should say. Um, mm. And he's so desperate, but it's not sentimental. Mm. Um, I mean, I've just, if I'm looking tired, it's for a good reason, because I've just spent three days in the recording studio with Ian McKellen, who last night finished reading Wolfbane. And the script um, that he had, which is in large, larger print for him, so that he can see it properly on the lectern, sure. actually had all your original illustrations for Wolfbane in it. It doesn't always happen because it depends on when we record the audio, but this time he had all the pictures and it was so great um, because he was looking at them and saying, oh, this is amazing. And one of the things he said was that he loves that, that the, there's nothing cutesy about your mm. evocation of wolves at all. Um, and in fact, I, I love that I picture can't. so much. Y yeah, you can't. You can't do cute, can you? <laughs> or you don't. I, 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 just, I, I, I just can't. I mean, no. If, I mean, all of this... Look, this has been how many years altogether? Did you say 20 years? But I, yeah, I'm nearly just 20 years. Sort of trying, trying to fix it to the amount of books. It's like nine books. So, so I'm thinking nine years. So okay, there was that hiatus in between. But yeah. what I feel is... A total shame is that I'm only just beginning to get the hang of it after all that time. <laughs> no, um, you're not. <laughs> well, but I always feel, I always used to feel that every time um, Fiona sent me, I, I, somehow I got to, <sighs> it's, it's been a ride. It's, it's been one. <laughs> I don't I'll, know I'll how you. Ride. Right, and I right, can tell right. you one thing. Let me just show you, because I've actually got what I think is an original print, all the original, I'm not sure, but this is what Fiona bought me when I ah, finished, I thought I'd finished the series. That's the and this, yeah, and this is, you know, it's oh. been framed and it's, it's, it's above my computer ever since when I've oh. been writing, even oh. when I thought I'd finished Wonderful. writing. Wonderful. And, you know, yeah. I thought I'd finished them, but... Um, and as, as I say, you, you tell the story as well, because, you know, Fiona and I agreed very early on that not to in, not to show in the, in the illustrations any, you know, actual character, um, which I think, mm. you know, we leave that to the reader's imagination, except for Wolf, of course. Um, yeah. And the, sometimes you achieve many different things in pictures. I mean, th there's a picture in Oathbreaker. Wolf has just, I won't include a spoiler, but... Wolf has just found something out about Tor Taylor's that, you know, makes him feel very alone. And there he is, silhouette. You've got the forest. You've evoked the forest as well. Um, but you've got this incredible loneliness of, of poor Wolf. Hmm. And do you sort of consciously sometimes set out to try to evoke, say, the forest or the landscape as well as the, the story? Because landscape must be very difficult to, to encompass in, in what will be a small picture. Mm -hmm. In sure, yeah, yeah. I, I I I would say so. But with that, mm. I feel I really cheated with that one. I mean, I sort of very <laughs> no, I I, I, I I did say a, a lot of it is smoke and mirrors, but um, I, I can't. I, I need to have, especially with anything to do with the wolf. Mm. I I feel it's got to be accurate I, I can't yes. um yes. it can't just come out of my head um i so agree yeah yeah uh, i mean it's it's that that's that's just the way that i see things so i mean in, in some ways I, I feel that i've gone overboard with the detail with the cross hatching i just i don't th you see i don't think so over, i mean yeah well to me, it's over precise, and I would, I, I would really like to. Each time I think I'm, I'm going to loosen up, I'm going to do something. So, and, and the only time when it seriously works for me is when I've managed to get away from this formula. Like, well, it's, mm. it, it's, it's never been a formula. I know. It's been like a groove that I got. Well, you see, that, that, that's really funny. Jeff, because I I love these. I mean, look, you know, I think we're we, we're on the same page in terms of detail, you know, and that's probably mm -hmm. why Fiona thought you'd be the perfect artist as you are, because mm -hmm. to illustrate my books, because 
you know, I'm obsessive about detail, as you can probably tell from the author's note, you know. And, and so, yeah. yes, I have to check everything far more detail than goes yeah. in the story. The idea I had was perhaps evoke the Stone Age world partly through artefacts. Artefacts, yeah, sure. And I've, I've never been sure whether this was something you thought, oh, God, she's got some artefacts that she wants me to, you know, because it's, it's quite no, difficult oh, to make on. them artistic. No. But, you know, I mean, here's Torax medicine horn. You know, this is actually yes. the one. And you, you may remember in Oathbreaker, I sent you a, a rubbish um, yes. picture of this. It's, it's got sellotape because to stop the top. Oh, I was going to say, yeah. Right. Yeah, it's full of earth blood, and which gets everywhere. Yeah, now this is from Wolfbane, actually. So fans won't have seen this one yet. But there we have... We have Torak's hand, but we're not seeing him. And then a wonderful, and that also shows pretty much the size. It's slightly bigger than the one I, you know, my, my little medicine horn. But mm. does your heart sink when I, I, I put list in the list, I put an artifact and give you a website or a picture or something? <laughs> <laughs> well, it's supposed to be Torak's hand and... I use my own hand for reference, well, and I've got it's, I, I've got quite an ancient hand by now, so that's that's not very precise, is it? No, no, no. But um, it, it, it could be Finn Keddins because they pass it over. So frankly, it could be okay. either. You know, um, it's, yeah. it's um, okay. But uh, it is a slightly different colour, isn't it? <laughs> I mean, it's that's it's a very light light colour one, but um, no. <laughs> um, but but do you, yeah, does no, your no, heart no, sink? No. What, why, is it why? well you know i just thought i mean an artifact is an artifact it's not as dramatic as you know a, a wolf running oh, or something no, no, no. you know no no but it's, it's no no it's, it's all part of the story on on uh, I, I mean the the, the axe heads and um i can remember the axe heads and that, yes uh, this elaborate sort of sinewy binding around them binding exactly into the, um <laughs> And the birch bark horn, and and that I I thought you know the birch bark horn has, has been mentioned in you know Wolfbane uh, Wolf brother, um, and then because Finkedin uses it, and then I thought I don't think anyone would really many people haven't seen them I've seen them, and I've heard one played, um, but you did it so perfectly, and that so that you know it, it does help people to actually mm -hmm. see something that otherwise they wouldn't have in their minds. Um, Michelle, you supplied me with a lot of detail on that one. I uh, did. I've actually got it here. Uh, I look on the internet. Oh, right. And there we are. <laughs> it's, it's the, um, the, the one in the middle. Yeah, sure. Oh, okay. Because, no, yes, I, I yeah. was trying to think what I did because there, there are not that many of them around these days. But, um, but the other aspect <laughs> of the, the Stone Age that... I think really comes through and this touches on you know you were talking about perhaps being over precise but there are areas where you were just not precise in, in a wonderful way is mm. is to create the sort of otherworldliness the the numinous the spiritual side of of the stone yeah. age the handprint for example um in solely oh, okay. and somehow you manage there to get it make it sort of seem like a warning you know it's it's a scary oh, really? handprint yeah, I oh, think really? so. I remember that, I mean, this, there's one, I think this would be an example, and I haven't got the earlier sketch, you know, creates such a sort of nasty picture, <laughs> spooky yeah. and uh, Stone Age yeah, as well. And yeah. there's, there's a sort of face in that tree, if, yeah. if you look at it. Um, I think that might have been intentional, but I'm really not quite sure on that. Well, it certainly... I think that developed from the original that I'd seen because certainly in the sketch, you know, it wasn't mm. quite as as alarming, um, and and it it got spookier um, in a wonderful way. You're quite harsh on yourself, Jeff, because you were saying, "Oh, I'm too detailed and everything," but you know when not to be detailed. Um, that there's a picture in Oathbreaker that whenever I think of that book, that's the picture. That picture comes to mind. Somehow you've got this feeling that he's coming towards you and it's really spiritual and otherworldly and Stone Age. Surely, tell me you're pleased with that one. No. <laughs> I, just, I just wish I could have done better with that one. Um, I, I, I can see the image in my head, but yeah. 
it's just realizing that image and I don't think that well it certainly didn't if I say it didn't work for me, it, it, it must have done it, otherwise I wouldn't have handed it over. Another way that you have brought the atmosphere of the stories and the locations has been the maps, you know, the end paper maps. The first one is is, is the Spirit Walker map of the Seal oh, it's, Islands. Yeah. Um, it's, it's my least favourite job, I have to say, is tidying up the sketch map that I've used for, you know, writing the story, which has got lots of corrections because I change things to fit the story as I go mm. along. Mm. And then I've got to do a tidier version for you. And, and that, you know, I think, oh, gosh, how is Jeff going to, you know, how is this going to work? How are you going to be able to make it work? And you do. But I try not to make so many mistakes with a map that's just unbelievable. And all the clans <laughs> moving around, you know, the, the, the map of the forest. Yeah. And, you know, they're nomadic. I can't get away from This is where, you know, we are slaves to detail, aren't we? They are nomadic well, people. Well, yeah. to keep tra- yeah. You know. Looking at that one now, I think, yeah, yeah, that's, that, that's okay. That's got a really, really cool it's, map. And I'll show you just just one other one, which I have to say, when I saw it, I was mostly looking at the map element. And then I saw what you'd done to the side of it. And it, it actually made me gasp. And that's the Oathbreaker map. There's a wonderful owl, which is the, the compass. And then you see to the right, oh, my God, it's this really scary face that the fundamentalist, you know, religious nutters who are the deep forest plans. And, and so you've created and you've also got this sense of depth. Yeah. And and something oh. like this, a design like this, which is so bold mm. with this hu- huge tree head, is that something? Yeah. And that, again, sorry, layperson's question: Is that something you see in your head first of all? Um, I, th- I think most of it evolves on the paper. I mean, I, I, I really, I, I can't. I can. I could have a pencil on and I can just scribble around and more or less see what happens. You know, we've talked about wolf, we've talked about creating this, the Stone Age world, but there yeah. are loads of other creatures in Torak's world, you know, apart yes. from wolf. Um, and I think some of some of the, the, the illustrations have achieved a number of different things because in some ways, you know, I, I deliberately su- suggest certain things because I want to show that things were different in the Stone Age. I mean, horses, for example, that's um, more like a Stone Age horse. I was given choices of things I could illustrate and the, the one that I thought that I'd be able to illustrate. This is what we call, or, or Americans call, a moose. Whereas moose. in America, it all gets very confusing. What they call an elk is a kind of large deer. I, I've met elks in the past. I don't know if you've ever seen any in, in real life, but they are absolutely I weird saw, creatures. Yes, they are. I saw one once, but it was a great distance but uh, yeah I mean, it's quite recognizable I'll, I'll, and then i'll go and kind of park in there uh, oh really yeah you see i've i've followed elk tracks in finland for about three hours um but i never actually saw the elk <laughs> mm. uh, it always seemed yeah. to just just get away from me they're, they're huge animals but they move so they're, quietly they're, they're, you know they just disappear yeah. But still on the, I just, this is one that I just love. This is from Viper's Daughter. Chapter, it, it's chapter 11. Um, this is a halibut, which <laughs> is just the weirdest creature. Um, <sighs> it's, I have to say, <sighs> it's, it's, you know, I've eaten halibut loads of times, but the first time I actually saw a real halibut was in Greenland when they pulled one out of the sea. But it, that's so great because, you know, they do have both eyes sort of squidged up on one side that's because the they're lying on the, they're bottom yeah. feeders. So. <laughs> yeah, I, and, uh, I wasn't too. If so, I wasn't too keen on that on myself. Oh, um, yeah, it didn't quite make it. Um, yeah. yeah. Well, so let me. Then, Sorry about that, Michelle. But I mean, not at all. I love that one, but this is one. Yeah. I think this may pass even your stringent test. All right, you're very hard on yourself, Jeff. But no, I mean, I'm not. animal animal <laughs> portraits. Yes, you are. But this one, this is um, from Spirit oh, Walker. That is okay. a portrait of a raven. Raven. I mean, I've got close to ravens in Alaska. There were some sort of hopping around on a um, a key, and I was sort of feeding them. Do you have ravens? I know you live in the most amazing oh, area yeah. of outstanding yeah. natural beauty. Do you have ravens oh. near you? Um, Yes, here the most days. Um, oh, you lucky! They're, they're generally flying over. 
Um, mm -hmm. I think I can go out the back and quite well. I don't know whether they're still doing it, but they, they're doing all this amazing display in the sky, yes. falling out of the sky, turning to turn absolutely incredible. Yeah, um, yeah. I mean, they're they're here every day, every day. Mm. Right. Do you the, like them? Do you like I, ravens? So, of, of course. Yeah, yeah I, I thought yeah, as much. I, I, I kind I, of I, thought I, the answer was. Yeah, no, no. We, we've not had them in our garden. Right. They, they, as I say, they come over regularly. Wonderful birds, absolutely incredible. Well, they are, and I envy you having them because, well, we have crows, but we don't have ravens yeah. in Wimbledon Common. Yeah. Um, yeah. But I think it comes through. I mean, Rip and Wreck, um, actually, yes, that there's one sneak preview for fans from Wolfbane. This is Rip and Wreck in attack mode. And I, I love that. And then one of my favourite portraits, um, and this just shows how how you, Jeff, sort of develop from what I say um, in my little list. You know, I mentioned this list that I send you. Um, I'm usually really tired because I've just finished the book or just about getting there. And for Spirit Walker, I think it was chapter nine, um, I said, well, I gave you, an, it's about a male boar wild boar and I said well it could be charging it could be pawing the earth it could be tusking a branch or the roots of a tree now yeah. that is so brilliant because that's really more of a portrait of that boar he's actually a character because yes he, he you know he was quite friendly to Torrent to begin with and then he goes mad for various reasons mm. I just love that um, oh, I'm, I'm so pleased because yeah yeah you can't quite yeah no okay fine that there's a lot of subtlety in that, you know, that there's, is he going to kill me or is he going to be friends to me? You know, he's, he's, and they're, they're so clever. Wild boars are, are clever animals and you've got all of that oh, in there. Sure. Yeah. Um, the, the, there's also a lot of cross hatching in there as well. Yes. Uh, it hides a lot, a lot of sins, I suppose. Well, you, you, you've mentioned that before, but to me, the cross action actually gives such sort of depth and complexity in everything. Um, well, some people can lay these things down with a few brush strokes. They can be very bold with it and very spontaneous, but. Yes. But if I say that cross hatching tends to. Not hide things, but it can. It's not. Oh, don't give up on that one. It's 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 just the way that I. It's very retro. It's it's not deliberate. I mean, it's just that I've been doing this for a very long time. But I mean, I particularly I admire people like Tony Cliff. Well, I think it's I think it's hugely effective, um, and I think it's it's one of my favourites of your many animal portraits. Um, yeah, well, and good. another one actually, because you know when I wrote Skin Taker, I thought oh, you know bears had, had been obviously the demon bear in Wolf Brother, but then and we'd had the polar bears, which you did magnificently. But then in Skin Taker, we have you know Torek is really having to deal with um, a brown bear. I mean, that is a full-on bear in scale. Was that a grizzly bear? Was that a grizzly bear? I can't remember. Well, um, it would, it's the same species, but it's called a brown bear. In I think okay. it's the same species. Yeah, yeah. It's, because it's Europe, it's a brown bear. Um, perhaps grizzlies are slightly bigger, but yeah, pretty much. And I, I do think that was magnificent. With a startled free, the bear rose to its full height and stared at Torak. And that's pretty much what's happening there. We had six books and you, you, you went through all the business. And it was, I should say, under a great time pressure because I was under time pressure. You know, it was a book a year and it was always right up against the publishing deadline. And I only ever could send you my list of illustrations when I knew... You know, I'd, I'd done the, the, the rewrite, really, what I call the rewrite. You know, the first draft is a complete mess. Um, so it would be unfair to send you a list because things are going to change. Um, sure. So it was always under a lot of pressure. But then finally, you know, I finished six books and you must have heaved a sigh of relief. And then about 10 years later, Fiona gets in touch and says she's going to write three more. Um, 
did you find it hard to get back into the oh, world? <sighs> when Fiona said, look, um, Michelle wants to do another three books, I mean, that's just, yeah, of course I wanted to do it. I really, really did want to do it. I, I couldn't. Sure. And I have to say, you you have outdone yourself. I know I say this every time, but, you know, for Wolfbane. Um, and again, without spoilers, um, you know, you, you, su you surprised me. You had some surprises because there are several glorious full page or even double page spreads that oh, I didn't yeah. know were coming. Um, mm. I think as a sneak preview for fans, we can show one of them. I mean, I, I just love that. You know, it's it's just perfect um, and it's so evocative. I, I can't say more than that because I don't want to give a spoiler, but it's it's really gorgeous. And that's a sort of silhouette, but in reverse, really, in a way, isn't it? Because it's not black. I had the feeling that the elk had a slight, um, almost fuzzy around the edges. So mm. Yes. Ethereal and what yes. it actually is. So for say that might actually work in repro, I'm, I'm not quite sure, mm. um, but it just seems quite stark white. Um, we'll have to see how it comes out. It's pretty well, I, uh, that's yeah. pretty much how it's going to, and I think you know, and did the, and the idea for these full full pages or, or single page. Mm. I mean, did, did was that just because you thought you know what I just want to I feel like doing this or I just want to. <sighs> God, I wish I could remember now. Uh, <laughs> it doesn't matter. I mean, like, <laughs> no, I, I, when I, the last book, I was very moved mm. by the end of the book. Mm. All of it, I was, but especially the end of yes. And I think I suggested to feel. Well, maybe Fiona suggested to me, I, I can't remember, I can't recall quite how it worked. I, I think she, she told me that it was sort of off your own bat almost that, that it, you became a It might have been, yeah. but I'm not yeah. quite sure. But I mean, Fiona yeah. was, she said, yeah, well, just draw a few things. And then she, I think, I, I, I got totally carried away with it and I thought, well, we could do this and we could do that. But most of the things that I thought of were impractical. And um, mm. so I think she gave me quite a few pointers as to which way she thought oh. it should go. And then she she did say that um, she, that Mich Michelle wasn't aware of what was going on in all the No, all the Michelle wasn't. So, <laughs> so I just thought, okay, let, let, let's see what happens. But um, fantastic. I, I in, in, in the end, I was quite doubtful whether they should be included because I, I, I thought here we go again I'm overproducing mm, I'm, I'm, I'm no. trying to put too much into this I, I would have liked personally I would have liked something very very loose you never really know whether you're working on the right lines or not I suppose that, that's what it comes down to in the end. I, I, but, I can understand I, your I, doubt but yeah, but I mean, yeah. you know, Fiona is not someone, this is, you know, Fiona Kennedy, my publisher and editor. She's not someone who says, yes, it's great when it isn't. Um, no, I, 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 I mean, certainly I, am not, as you know. <laughs> yeah. uh, I mean, so, I, I, I fully accept all of these things, mm, Michelle, but yeah. you probably know yourself, it is, it's impossible to be objective. Yes, it um, is. It is. A book must take a long time to write. I mean, I, I, I do a few illustrations. It, it, it's, it's, it's over a very intense, concentrated time. Yeah. I'm not working on it for, year, for maybe a year or however long. It, it's but about, a, each of these books takes about a year. When it comes so to the end, are you immediately on to the next book? With the, with the first six, The Chronicles of Ancient Darkness, the first, the original series, which I, you know, um, it was under time pressure, so... I was almost like that. Um, I mean, it was Anthony Trollope, who I'm a fan of Anthony Trollope. He would end one book and the next day he would start the next one. I'm not quite as bad as that. 
Um, but I had to be pretty much focused on, and I, as I was writing um, towards the end of one book, I would start, I would be forever getting ideas for, for the next book. Wow. And so okay. I had one of those files which had, you know, folders for five different things. And I, I it did end up bulging with notes and things like that. Um, so then there was usually a sort of, you know, it wasn't like starting to write again, but it would be mm. tidying my notes and getting my head around what was happening. So yeah, it was pretty mm. relentless. Right from the beginning, you wouldn't have known how the last book would have worked out. I mean, you, you wouldn't, there wouldn't be that structure. Right. No. So is a lot of it evolutionary? Does it, um, do, do, do you go down one particular path and you think, oh, this isn't, this isn't working? So, but do the characters, are, are the characters fixed or do they develop? I sort of knew them when Torak walked into my head and, and Ren, hmm. but they are probably the things that change most because I get to know yes. them most, I get to know them better. So, so for example, in Spirit Walker, um, at the beginning, I had planned, because I am a planner, that, you know, Ren would only be with Torak for the beginning of the book and then he'd go off yeah. to the Seal Islands. Yeah. But, you know, she's not like that. Um, so that was quite inconvenient. I had to change my plan for Spirit Walker because that did involve some major changes. No spoilers, but I knew there was something odd about Far's knife in chapter one of Wolf Brother that we'd sure. only find out about in Oath, uh, Outcast, you know, because you have to have those sort of details. And I knew roughly what was going to happen at the end of each book. Um, but how you get there? That depends on the characters, and that's the journey I go on with them. And and it's like it always. I always think it's like being two people as a writer. You know, one hand when I'm planning, I'm like an eagle, one of your wonderful eagles, looking down, moving them around. Mm -hmm. And then once I start to write, I'm on the ground with them, and I'm yes. being wolf or yeah. Torek or Ren. And that's when I think, oh, because I thought in Oathbreaker, Wolf was going to be out for vengeance against the Azzi because, you know, um, he's been, he was kidnapped in, in Soul Eater. But once I was with Wolf in his head, you know, Wolf, wolves don't bear grudges because that's not a very evolutionarily clever thing to do. Um, if someone's hurt them, they just avoid them. Sure. So that made me, that then led me to Wolf realising that Tarak is not Wolf. Um, so that was a lovely sort of example of, oh, wow. This is where the emotional focus of Wolf's story in this book is. Hence your lovely picture of, you know, Wolf in silhouette, which just perfectly encapsulated Wolf's loneliness when he realises that. So that's an organic process. Can you turn up from it at all? Can you escape? Not really. <laughs> no. That's, that's such a great question. I mean, yes, I can sometimes, you know, if I'm in Sainsbury's or something, yeah, you know, but... Um, it, it, yeah, you know, it, it'll, but, um, it'll always be there. Um, and, and, you know, Sainsbury's is a good example because I don't have a car. Right? So to get to Sainsbury's, I have to walk right. across the common. Yeah. So it's half an hour's walk. But even, um, and even I'll go, when you walk... Yeah, I mean, even when I'm walking... Even because, when you walk across the common, I mean, it is... It's, absolutely. Is it, yeah. yeah. And, and actually, you know, it can be very inconvenient because I always carry a notebook, but there's something about the act of walking. I don't know if you find this, but... Yes, um, definitely. That, that, you know, the Romans had a phrase for it. They called it solvatur ambulando, you know, which I think is solution through walking. There's something physiological that's happening, which quite often I'll have been stuck with a piece of prose or something or a scene. Mm. Once I start, yeah. I think, OK, go to, go to the shops. Mm. And then I'll start having the ideas or at least know the question I've got to be asking myself. So quite often yeah. I'll stop in the middle of the common and just jot down ideas and yeah. things like that. Because it, it, um, it resolves itself almost yeah. naturally, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, 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 or at least I know what I should be focusing on. But where, um, where did this Nigan character come from? I mean, he's uniquely evil. Nigan. He is evil. I mean, yes. He lived in that world, and he lived as what I would call a natural man, and and and, 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 and yet beautiful things like birch trees. Yes. Yes. He couldn't, I mean, that, that was just so weird. That was just so awful. Uh, yeah, oh, I'm glad you that, that, yes. 
Where well, that's I... a great that's a great question. I'll I'll tell you. I I was trying to think of an antagonist for the books, the, the later books, and he's a psychopath. In modern, <laughs> in modern terms, in modern <laughs> terms, he's a psychopath. And then I thought, well, yes, actually, you know, that's what a demon. No sense of right or wrong. Cold beyond imagining. No empathy. Um, and as soon as I had that psychologically, that gave me Nigin. But it makes perfect sense in Stone Age psychological terms that they would think he's a demon. So you know, they must have had psychopaths, and so that's that's oh, that's where uh, he came from. Sure. You know, they must yeah. have. You know, six thousand years ago is not that long ago. So that is but where I mean, Nigin came from. But the other thing I. I had was, and I, I've written it down, I don't know why, but it says nothing can save you except writing. It keeps the walls from failing. And that's a quote from Charles mm. Bukowski. And I thought, yeah, yeah I, I, I completely understand that. You see, yes. you're a writer, I'm, I'm not. I, 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 if so, I'd really like to be. I'd really like to be a musician. I'd really like right. to do all sorts of things, but I'm not. Right. I'm stuck with this sort of Endless bloody cross hatching. Uh, <laughs> um, so okay, I'm, I'm stuck with that, and I'll go along with it. But um, there are just so many wonderful things out there. But I understand that um, Charles Bukowski quote as well. Yes, I mean it's yes. more or less what you were saying about that. You, if you say you stuck with this, whilst whilst you're involved with a book, you. It, 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 mm. it, it, it's a permanent thing. It's very, very intense. It becomes your life, yes. and it, it all it makes me wonder about. Um, uh, if I say, it makes me wonder. I'm sure that I ne neglect so many other things that I should be paying oh, yeah. attention to. Oh, I, I do. If I say, yeah. I, I feel that's a shame. It it, mm. it it is a shame, but you can't do everything, can you? I mean, you just gotta. Well, you, um, you you can't do everything, Jeff. But um, no, no. And when, when we when we look back at this, when I just look back at what you've done, you know, in preparing for this, you know, it's been mm. nearly 20 years and mm. I've I've looked at all your, you, you know, the, the books and all the illustrations, all the maps, um, six original chronicles of ancient darkness, three, you know, the latest books, mm. Viper's Daughter, Skin Taker and now Wolfbane. At a rough count, that's about nine, ten maps. Um, I think it's in at least 300 illustrations. 300 illustrations. Uh, cool. <laughs> uh, yeah, sure. Yeah, um, well you know, and, and what you've done, everything has created, every single one has been a window into Torak's world. Um, well, so, look, I'm just know, incredibly pleased. But of course I am. It's, it's, it's just, just wonderful. Really is. So, well, I just want yeah. to say, you know, on behalf of all the fans, uh, mm. but also from me, you know, I just want to say thank you. Yeah. Well, because you did an amazing yeah. job. It's, well, it's been an amazing ride. Well, maybe one thing informs the other. I mean, I've, I've, I've kept quoting back to you some of the things that I've picked out has been quite special to me. Mm. And the, if so, there's hundreds of them. Um, would be a big list. Would be a big list. But, <laughs> uh, but one that I, I, a lot of them have probably informed what what mm. I've done. Um, so yeah, it's just a reciprocal thing. Can I just give you another quote? I just really why just, not? I don't know why. Thank you. Well, this, Do. <laughs> this, I don't know about other people. But when I wake up in the morning, I put my shoes on and I think, Jesus Christ, now what? <laughs> <laughs> that, that's also Charles, Charles Bukowski. And, um, right. Is, is it ever like that for you? Because it's, like, it's pretty much like that every day for me. Yeah, um, the, there have been times, certainly this <laughs> pandemic. Yeah, there have been times. Um, yeah. But it's the but work really, that gets one through somehow. That's you know. That's the only thing, isn't it? Mm. It's the only thing. It's not watching TV every no. hour. No, it isn't. It isn't. Certainly not at the moment. 
it's been so well, fascinating to meet you. Um, well, and, Michelle, and I talk. hope it's all worked out. And I hope oh, absolutely. Do something with it because I wouldn't know where to start. Well, I wouldn't Pizza. either because it's, you know, I've thoroughly enjoyed it. And uh, again, you know, thank you so much well, for what you've done for well, my books. You know, it's... likewise. <laughs> yeah.